we did say we we're going to mention uh, <laughs> mention a certain U.S. international, uh, Jordi Mihailovic, mm-hmm. and we we know that he is blowing up this season. Um, he had offers, I think, to move this summer that weren't really concrete, but there were rumors. Um, and he is playing out of his skin this season. Um, wh- outside of the kind of like a, the physical change, what what has he done specifically or what has the system done for him? If there's been a, a different change in the system um, right. that, that has get, let him play at, at this immense level, like U.S. men's national team call him level. Yeah, you know, I mean, first of all, uh, Greg Berhalter told them, if you want to be part of the national team, you got to score more goals. And obviously, he's got I have seven goals. Or I think he's tied for like third or fourth in the Golden Booth race. So that's one thing. Like I said, was, he's making more late runs into the box, you know, pretty much tapping it into wide open cages. He's attacking the defense. You know, he's you, he's got better footwork, I find. You know, he's able to dribble a little bit more than he was last year. Um, yeah, he's just, uh, he's got the drive. He really wants to win. And I think that he's a real competitor and it's really showing this year, even though I find he's kind of tailed off in the last couple of games before his injury, but, you know, I think, um, he's really real key to our success this year, even though he's playing a bit more on the left side, I like to see him a bit more central. Um, to help set up guys a bit more, which has been a little bit less this year. But um, I think when Mason Toy comes back, I'll probably go back to the three-five-two with Georgie in the middle mm-hmm. and two strikers up front. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. I think it almost helped him a little bit playing a little bit wider because that's kind of that's kind of Greg. I think that's probably where he would fit in in Greg's system. Yeah, probably. Um, he's kind of like that wide center midfielder type of role where you're you're creating from the from the flanks, right? You're, you're, there's very little central creation in Greg's system. It's so a that's lot. That's Pulisic's more... system. That's Pulisic's position though, right? So he'd be like second fiddle behind him. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would see him playing that same Pulisic role in Nations League. Mm. I think he would, he would go into this Granada game that's playing at 10 o'clock tonight, which, wow, I forgot that was happening tonight. Um, he would, he would go ahead and fill that same role and do it brilliantly. I think it is a great fit for him. And I remember reading the news that he was pulling out because of injury and I sent it to Connor and I, I, I almost cried because we've been calling for, for months and he finally gets in and bang. Injury. Yeah. Well, he started practicing again this week and is looking a lot better. Um, so hopefully his ankle injury is not too serious because you know, like ankle injuries can linger for a while, which is yeah. what happened with Pieta being this season. He was supposed to be out a couple of weeks. It was out three months. Well, yeah, maybe maybe Jordy can start up top for us at striker. I mean, he can't do worse than current maybe there. or maybe more like a false nine role. Right? I mean, that yeah, would be I fun. Can, oh, <laughs> false nine, USMT false nine. Yeah, we talked about that one. I love Barca, messy days at first. Um, we've been talking about who's gonna who's gonna put the ball away for the men's national team and. Nobody. Right now, it's nobody. <laughs> so anybody and who wants that's to what's missing time. for you guys. You guys could, yep. you know, you guys could be the best team in Concaf if if you had a legitimate striker. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Do we know it? Yeah. <laughs> if I see if I see Hazes Ferrer put one more ball into the seventh row from four <laughs> yards out, I think I might just no. stop watching. And that's the one kill. thing that Canada is not missing is attack. You know. Oh my Our- gosh, Jonathan David. Kyle has that been great for Canada Kyle so far? He hasn't. He Kyle hasn't, but Kyle Lahren's you know? also been fantastic. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, anyways, we we beat um we beat we beat the who did we beat the Curacao four 0 last night. So yeah, that, that was a good win for us for sure. All right, so staying on the Jordy topic, obviously with his his big rise this season, he's garnered a lot of interest overseas in Europe. Do you think he will be sold? And if so, at what point in the season do you think? Do you think he'll be sold in the summer or would it be until the end of the season? If he is sold in the summer, I think he has to be loaned back in the the season here because I, I really do think we have a chance to make a run. And without Georgie, those chances are greatly diminished. Even though, you know, we have uh, Miljevic, who looked good in the uh, Canadian Championship? He was 
totally dominated him in uh, Sanusi Ibrahim. Uh, he's kind of also supposed to be the heir apparent to Georgie, but they're different style of players, you know. One's Argentinian, a bit more shifty, you know. Does you know good good movement, good passes, but he's he's got to mature a little bit and probably get a little bit stronger. Um, I think he could fill in, but we would probably still be a playoff team, I think, but we would not be top four or top three like we are right now. But if he gets sold in the summer, he has to finish the season. That's like a absolute must, absolute must. And I know there, there's been rumors about Lees, Dortmuth, maybe a couple of, uh, I think Roma was mentioned or AC Milan, I'm not sure which one. Um, but I don't want to see him go to Bologna because we'll get nothing if he goes to Bologna. But would the MLS let that happen? A homegrown player being transferred to a European team for nothing? I don't know. Right? It's MLS. It's central... Any, anything, Ross, anything Ross related for MLS, you never will know. That's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it happened, it happened to Chris Mueller. He left for nothing. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, Louis Binks was uh, our defender, our probably our best defender a couple of years ago. Yep. He left midseason last year to even play a game because he was hurt. And then he got healthy and went to Bologna and he's better played. So, yeah. Um, just a note on Sanusi Ibrahim. Uh, he, he came on and played against Red Bull. I think it was one of his first appearances. And I was like, this dude's going to be a baller one day. Yeah. I yeah. really like the way he plays. He's 19, you know, he's built, he's short, but he's built like a tank. Yes, he's massive. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be something special one day. Very, very big fan. Um, so we talked about kind of where where you want him to go. What what's his price tag? What do you what are you okay with letting him go for? Well, he's valued on transfer market at six point six million euros. So I think anything under that, like under five million, would be disappointing. Mm-hmm. I think he'll, I think he could go for more, especially if he gets sold at the end of the season. And let's say he's wins mls mvp then you know he could go for seven i think but yeah i'm I'm no expert i don't know right i mean yeah if he wins mls mvp and let's say he finishes with 15 and 15 yeah maybe but he's also 24 or 23 turning 24 so he's not the youngest anymore he's still a young player but you know the guy's out of MLS are going for big price tags are usually a little bit younger than him. Right. Well, that was the thing we were actually talking about this last week was uh, what, what do MLS players, what type of value do we get out of them now? Right. You saw um, Pepe go for 18 mil. You saw Buxa go for yeah, 10 just, just last week. Um, what I, I almost am wondering what they're, what they would expect to get for him. Um, again, it all depends on how he finishes the season. If he has a second half of the season, the same way he had the first, I would push for double digit transfer, whether, whether they get it or not, I don't know, but I would try and get as close as I could. I think he has that ceiling where he can be successful. And in today's market where you've got people going for all sorts of silly money, 10 mil and an MLS would be a massive transfer for us as a, as a group, but also a, the club. a respectable number, a respectable number. Because that that's kind of the goal, right? Is to buy, buy low, sell high. And the more you sell, then the higher that low can become. Correct. Yeah. Which, which is what the goal is. Sorry, guys. I just got to plug in. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to die here. When, yeah, no when, uh, when I tell you that's probably every other episode for me. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how long this takes, it might be this one too. <laughs> no problem. Well, I will say the only thing I would be concerned about, and I feel like I've seen it with a few teams, like NYC, for example, is setting a price too high and then not having teams reach it and potentially watching the value of the player go down. Like, I don't know if they're going to get, if if like NYC would get the level of money that I feel like we've once heard rumored with Tati. I'm not saying that that will happen in this case, but it's just something that I've seen a few MLS teams do. So it's just something I... I'm a little concerned about when I see like star players on teams looking to make a move to Europe. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's made it clear that that is his goal to make it to Europe. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think like uh, maybe Leeds would make sense because the, you know, the American connection, you just got Aronson that went there. 
Um, I just don't know how much you would play. So maybe like more Bundesliga team, like maybe Dortmund or or Leipzig or, you know, might be a better fit for him, even though they haven't really been rumored. But, you know, maybe a team like that or or maybe Leeds could, could work because they're, you know, mid-lower table team. So maybe he would get playing time, but that's what he needs, right? He needs to go somewhere where he's going to get playing time if he really wants to become a fixture on the uh, U.S. men's national team. For sure. For sure.